Hey guys, this is AWS Simplified, and today I'm going to show you how to connect a Lambda function to an S3 event, specifically an object creation event. So firstly, let's look at how this thing is going to work. So the first step is to create a Lambda function. I'm going to be calling this Lambda function transaction processor. I'm going to code up a Lambda function such that it can process a file that looks like this. After that, I'm going to create an S3 bucket and we're going to call that S3 bucket the transaction store. And the next step is to hook up the trigger. So every single time someone uploads a file to this S3 bucket, it's going to asynchronously invoke this Lambda function. And this Lambda function is just going to do some light processing of the file's content. And the final step is upload the file to the S3 bucket and make sure everything is wired up and working correctly. So that's how this is going to work. Let's go to the console and get started. So here we are in the console page. So I'm going to go over to find services here and type in Lambda. And click on that. And we're going to come over here and click on create a function. And from here, we're going to call my function name transaction processor. And for the runtime, we're going to pick Python 3.6 and permissions. So what we need to do here is create a role that has S3 get object permissions. So luckily, one of the policy templates here actually has that for you. If you click on policy templates down here and you type in S3 and you see this option here, Amazon S3 object read only permissions. So that's going to give us the permissions that we need. And I am going to name this S3 access role. So this is going to associate this role with my Lambda function. So everything looks good here. I'm going to go ahead and click create function. And that may take a moment or so for the function to be created. Alrighty, and here we are with the transaction processor Lambda function. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is put in our handler code. So if I go over here, I have some pre-written code that I wanted to insert directly into here. Uh, so let's take a quick look at what this Lambda handler is doing. So first, we're going to grab the bucket ID, and we're going to parse the event to grab the bucket name using this dictionary lookup notation. And then we're going to do the same thing for the key. And again, we're going to be looking up the key in the object. And then from there, we're going to use the bucket and key combination to fetch the object from S3. And the fourth step is to deserialize the file's contents and put it into a local object that I'm naming data in this case. We're going to print data so we can see what it looks like. And finally, the final step is to iterate over the contents of the JSON object and print the transaction type. So that's exactly what we have here. So I'm going to take that, come over here, and paste that in. And I'm going to click Save. And that is pretty much everything for the Lambda function. I can leave all these settings down here empty. Don't really need to worry about it. So from there, I'm going to go to the S3 section of the console. Type in S3. So I'm going to click on create a bucket here. And I'm going to name this bucket transaction store. Store AWS simplified. I'm going to pretty much leave all the settings here default. Click next. Click next. Click next. Create the bucket. All right, awesome. So bucket's created. I'm going to click into the bucket and we're going to go to properties. And from here, we're going to the events section. That's going to let us hook up our S3 put to our Lambda function. I'm going to click on that. And here's the dialog box. So what we need to do here is click on add a notification. And we get to pick which type of notification we want to, to trigger on. But for this exercise, we want to pick the put event. So I'm going to click the put checkbox. I'm also going to name this event S3 object 
output so I can keep track of it later. They also have some additional options here. So say, for instance, you only wanted to apply this S3 trigger to certain subdirectories of your bucket. You can specify the subdirectories here. And similarly, if you only want to apply this to certain types of files that are being um, updated and put into this bucket, then you can do so by changing the file suffix here. And this is actually the one that's important, so where we're going to send it to. So we're going to be sending it to our Lambda function. And this should pre-populate with the results. Yep, so there's our transaction processor. And I selected that. I'm going to click Save. And so it should show up as an active event here. Let me just refresh the page because sometimes there's a bit of a delay. Yeah, so there we go. So we have one active notification that's now set up. If I click on this guy, you can see exactly what I just created. So the S3 object put, the put event type, and the destination Lambda. So before I actually upload event, I want to go back to Lambda just to confirm that the S3 trigger is present. So going back into that, and there we go. So now we have the S3 trigger that's present. So if I click on this guy, we can see that we have the bucket name here, so transaction store AWS simplified. We have the event type, and we have the notification name. So now we're going to go ahead and upload a file to that S3 bucket. So we're going to go back to S3, click on the bucket in question, click on Upload, Add Files, and here's my transaction JSON file. And here's the size. I'm going to click Next to upload it. Just giving us some warnings. That's fine. We can leave everything default. Standard tier looks good. And Upload. And there we go, our file is there. So that should have triggered an S3 put and should have triggered our Lambda function. So let's go back to the Lambda function monitoring section to see if there's actually an instance of the invocation. Going back here, transaction processor, going to the monitoring section. And there we are. So we have one data point here signaling that there was one invocation. Very quick duration, did not error out, so that's perfect. So let's go to CloudWatch to see the logs that were emitted and verify that we were able to successfully handle the message and log the contents. So I'm going to the log section. Click on the log group and click on the log stream. And here we go, here's our logs. So here's the first line where I was printing the data object. So we're just printing the contents of the JSON file here. And you can see here I'm iterating over the JSON contents and extracting out the transaction type, so the purchase and the refund, and that's being extracted out here. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and if you have any topics you'd like me to cover, drop me a message below in the comments section, and please don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks so much again, and I'll see you next time.